Can you use the Razer Blade 15 from 2020 as your only video editing computer? Let's find out. Oh, the keyboard's in the way. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So you've heard me talk about this laptop a lot. I'm very, very excited by it and what we can do with it. So today we're gonna put it through its paces as a video editing computer, and we've got everything set up, ready to go. So let's go. I like being prepared so we don't have to waste time because I don't like wasting your time. I definitely don't like wasting my time. So let's plug everything in. Now, the question of the video isn't necessarily, can this work as an editing laptop? Obviously it can. It's got very powerful processor. It's got a very powerful GPU. The real question is, in my mind is, is this powerful enough to replace, say, a desktop computer? Could this be your only machine? That's what we're gonna find out today. And we've got everything set up. I'm so excited. And since we're on an RGB gaming laptop, it's only fair that we have a fully mechanical keyboard. You guys keep saying that I should try a mechanical keyboard. Here we go. Click, clack, click, clack, click, clack. <laughs> so we are going to use a program called Premiere Pro, which is like Adobe's professional level video editor. I do pay for their monthly license. And to make it fair on the computer, we're going to record externally to a device so we don't have to use the computer's power and this is a more fair test. So let's get to it. And I already transferred the, the files over here. We actually have the unboxing video for the Razer Blade that we are gonna do this test with. So Razer Blade unboxing test. Can you hear that clicking? Can you hear that clicking? I'm very, very excited about this. I have very much, very much enjoyed this laptop. I think this thing is crazy powerful, but I am a video editor primarily. That's what I bought this laptop for. So let's make sure that it can do that. We've imported all the footage. So we've got three layers of 4K files, 10 bits. So I use the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. So the main shot is in what's called Apple ProRes. And then the other angles are in Panasonic's uh, codec. So we'll see how smoothly these play. So let's, that's really the key, right? Here we go. How smoothly? My return policy would disagree with you. Man, that is... That's pretty smooth. I don't see any slowdowns as we're scrubbing through the files. I don't think I'm seeing a single drop frame. Hold on, let's let's scrub through a little more. Internet. I need HDMI. Are you guys, are you seeing that? I'm not seeing a single drop frame. Normally when we do videos like this, when we did the XPS 15, uh, I didn't make a video on the XPS 17 because I ended up returning it because of the trackpad issue. But while editing on it on my own time, I can't, I can't think of a computer I've ever used that's been this smooth. And I think that's due, uh, Adobe Premiere and NVIDIA work really well together. Adobe Premiere is able to take advantage of NVIDIA's NVENC encoders. Um, and I were really, I guarantee, I guarantee, I haven't done this test yet. I haven't spoiled the results even for myself. I guarantee when we export, it's gonna be lightning fast. To plug right this is crazy. Okay, so that's one layer. Let's go to two layers and see how that is. Okay, now we are in, hold on, let's make sure we're not driving ourselves crazy with audio. I'm not seeing any slowdowns. I'm not seeing any slowdowns, any stutters. That's wild. That's wild, okay, two layers of 4K. Let's go for the third layer of 4K. These are real, like these are legitimately big files and this is not, so if you're not a video editor and you don't know everything about codecs, there are, IPB codecs and they're all I codecs. I'm, you don't need to be an expert on this, but the bigger the file size on the codec, generally, if it's an all I codec, it's bigger and it's more cumbersome for like your storage or your hard drives, or your SD cards, um, but it's way easier for your computer to edit. These are not those files. These are IPB files, which are a little smaller, but are harder on your computer. And I'm not, that's not something that I, I don't see any slowdowns. Like that's, that's wild. That is wild. Okay, here's the third layer. We're at the third layer. Do we have any slowdowns now? I'm not even seeing a single dropped frame. The fans have kicked on now that we're doing like real work. Um, if this is as loud as they get, I think I would totally be okay using this for an editing laptop, but that basically, like, I don't see a single, can, I don't see a single drop frame. Leave me a note if you see them, cause I could be blind. It's very early in the morning. It's 6.30 in the morning right now. So maybe I'm missing something, but let me know if you see a drop. Instantly. It's not taking a second to catch up. It's just working. That's okay. Playback. That's impressive. That is very, very impressive to me. Normally when I'm using a laptop, that's where I have to sacrifice on is it's like, okay, the playback's not going to be as smooth. We've seen that it can do the playback now that we've messed around with it a bit. Let's actually import this footage the way that I would for a video. 
Okay, bring you in. Bring you in. Let's make sure effects control, you need to be flipped around. 80. Okay, so what we need to do, we need to synchronize all these clips, which is one of my favorite features of Adobe. I'm not, this is not a sponsored video by Adobe. I just really like this. I wish um, Final Cut Pro X had something. They, Final Cut Pro X does have a multicam mode, but I just like how this kind of gives me the control over it, and I really like that. Okay, and we are now set up for editing. So the first thing we're going to do, let's add a little bit of color. We're not going to do a lot when it comes to color, because this is not a color grading video. This is just a... If you're editing, you add a grade, and you have all these files, will you have problems? So this is Blackmagic Extended Film on ProRes. This is not Blackmagic Raw. So we won't do any light. We'll just add a little bit of contrast. Oop, hold on, click here. A little bit of contrast. A little bit of saturation. And that's really it. And this is not a calibrated monitor. So don't, if you're looking at this and you're like, Gary, what are you doing? This is not calibrated. So again, this is not a grading video. This is an editing video. So we'll drop down the contrast a little bit. That looks good enough for purposes of this video. Normally I would not keep it as exposed like that. And I would have my waveform up if I'm doing actual color grading. But we're not doing actual color grading. So this grade. So we have a grade. Does that affect the performance? Not perspective, but I've I cannot, I could probably watch this playback all day. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay. We've got the grade. Do the audio, audio gain. We will normalize all peaks. There we go. Okay. And now back to the actual cutting. So I really think that editing's in three parts. Now I used to think it's two. Now I think it's three. We just did the first part, which is like the processing, making sure your audio is good, making sure everything's lined up. It's imported properly. Now we're going to do the cutting, like the actual editing. Um, and let's see how that works. So let's, the playback's a big part of that though. So let's come over here. We'll edit the intro of this video and see how smooth or terrible of a process that is. So here is where I like to do my little push in, cut that, cut, cut, zoom in just a scooch more. Scale, we'll do a keyframe here, bring it over here, scale it a little bit keyframe it. So when you do keyframes, it lets you do, it lets you move and change things as you go. So you can see, let me do my little zoom in. Is it any good? You know, for purposes of the video, I think that's pretty good. Ripple delete. So let's add our effect real quick. There we go. So we don't have the audio. I still have to get the audio installed on this computer. So we don't get the little, okay, we'll make the sound. You ready? What's up there? <laughs> Everyone, I'm the everyday dad. If, if I, I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So we got the you can figure it out. Scale it up, bring the position down a little bit. So you can figure it out. I'm so excited. Ooh, ooh, we caught something. You can see there's a microphone in there. So we have to scale all of this up real quick. So let's scale this until that microphone. Sometimes you got to fix your mistakes in post, right? There we go. Okay, we scaled that up a little bit. And that should look pretty good. That is a mistake. Look, the everyday dad makes mistakes too. Every, I'm an everyday dad, not an everyday perfectionist. When I when you make a mistake, I like to cover it up by switching angles, which is why I do three angles. Okay, you can hear the fans are kicking on now. Can you hear that? They're, that's pretty loud. Okay, so yes, I would say we've graded it. We've processed the audio. The playback is buttery smooth. It's crazy smooth. Uh, we've got the three layers of 4K 10-bit in there. Even the ProRes, so ProRes natively works on Apple machines with like Final Cut. This is a Windows machine with Premiere and it's even still just super smooth. Okay, we've proven that the editing is fine. We've edited the intro of this video. You can see it's not very, I don't do very complicated edits. Um, what else can we do? Let's add um, some titles really quick just to make sure that all of those settings work. So basic lower third, I'm a pretty basic person. About today's video. What's something cool that we could say about today's video? Um, mechanical keyboards are certainly louder. <laughs> that is something that I am learning today. All the effects are working, no issues. Okay, so now we've got I said editing's in three parts, right? We've got the processing, we've got the actual cutting, no issues so far. But where it's really gonna come down to, can this replace a desktop computer, is gonna be the render. So let's actually, let's turn on everything. Let's make this as hard on the computer as we can. All of the files are open, and, but since I don't wanna be here all day, uh, you guys get to, through the magic of video editing, I won't make you sit through it. But, okay. So we're gonna do a five minute clip and we're gonna render it the same way that we would render a normal YouTube video. You can see we've got all three layers ready to go. So let's come back over to editing. 
We've got all the layers up. Everything is just how I would do for a YouTube video. So file, export, media. Now the big thing's gonna be, we'll do H.264, we'll do YouTube 4K, which is UHD, you can see 3840 by 2160. Let's make sure we have hardware encoding because we've got that NVENC encoder. If you have used, like on the XPS line, it doesn't have the 2060 or the 1660, which are Turing graphics cards. You can have hardware encoding enabled, but it's Intel's QuickSync. It's it's not the same. So let's, I'm very, this is the one that, this is what I've been waiting for the entire video. So let's go up here, export. Holy cow, look at that. One minute and 40, like one minute and 46 seconds for the, oh, now we're going to two minutes, okay. Two minutes for the five minute video of three layers of 4K. That's, that's insanely fast. That's faster than double of real time. That's wild. Like that is, my MacBook does not edit that fast. This is crazy. Like this NVENC, I'm, again, I'm not sponsored by NVIDIA. I'm not sponsored by Adobe. This is wild. But you can definitely hear the fans are turning on. And while we're doing this, hold on. Let's see if we've got any thermal issues while we're exporting. And we will use the extreme tuning utility to check that out. Okay, we're still rendering in the background. You can see we're at 95% CPU utilization. We're basically maxed out for memory utilization, but we are not, we're not having thermal problems. The temperature is at 78 degrees, between 78 and 81. Um, that's pretty darn good. We've got all six cores active. We are not having thermal throttling, and you can see that right here. But what's interesting is we are having power limit throttling, which means the computer itself, like the BIOS, is limiting the power to the CPU. Is that good or bad? We'll have to see. That could be a Razer thing where they, they're undervolting, maybe not officially undervolting, but they're not giving as much power to the computer. However, I like that we're not having any thermal problems in any way, shape, or form. And we're like, now we've got a minute left. Okay, well, let's, let's not jump to any conclusions. Let's let it finish rendering. So I'll give you a 50 second break. Okay, it was, it was more like 30 seconds because we're at seven seconds left, but you can hear the fans are really kicking on and we still had over that two minutes, no thermal issue. I have zero problems with the thermal performance just on that quick edit. And I imagine even over like a longer 10 minute export, we would have no issues. So that took what? A little over two minutes. That's impressive. That is very, very impressive to me. So let's bring up what we've just done. And the fans are going immediately back down, which is very nice documents. Premiere Pro, here's the file that we just did. Okay, there we go. It worked. We edited the intro of a video, we exported it, we did lots of 4K. So can the Razer Blade 15 base model from 2020 replace even a desktop computer? Absolutely, absolutely. I, like I said, I have had an iMac Pro in here for a long time. I'm using a MacBook kind of setup as a desktop computer right now. I think this, with the speed we saw, no issues on playback, lightning fast rendering. I mean, yes, you could get faster on a desktop, but what good does saving you like another minute or so when you're already going double real time on exporting? I don't know that a desktop will give you that much more performance. So I'm very, very impressed. I'm willing to say that yes, you could use the Razer Blade 15 from 2020 as your only video editing computer. And if this video, if you're like Gary, Gary, okay, you got me interested. I'm interested in buying the Razer Blade 15. I'm interested in what comes in the box. Well, good news. I've actually, whew, good thing that you told me that because I've actually got an unboxing video that you can find right here. Click, 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 click. <laughs> Thanks for watching.